Hey there, it's Walter here from FX Jake, and I want to take a look at the charts here because we had a couple of questions concerning some of the setups, so I wanted to go over those. So the first question I have here is from Jeff, and you can see here Jeff's looking at the um, Jeff's looking at the old. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in on this one. No, I can't. He's looking at the pound Aussie. Let me pull up the pound Aussie. Pound Aussie daily chart. And just looking at the kangaroo tail on the pound Aussie daily chart. So let's look at this. So as I see it, this is a pretty darn good spot to take a kangaroo tail trade. And I'll show you why. The reason why will pop out as soon as I look at the uh, the uh, line chart. The reason why is because the market came to 52.40 and found resistance, and then it finally broke through, came back down and found support, came back down. Now, right here, notice how even, let me zoom in so you can see. Right here, notice how even though the market did break through this level, it actually held before it did. It's a classic sign of a support and resistance level. So then it, it broke through, came back up, and sort of double topped up here and then fell. And this is the first time it's been up, up there since then. So it's actually been quite some time since it's come to this level, and you can, um, I think it looks like Jeff's drawn a Fib grid on the chart here, which is, you know, a 38.2% Fib retracement, which is great to see. Uh, so, like, if I go ahead and go from here, sorry, I did it backwards, from here, you can see I'm not very good at I'm not very uh, practiced at drawing these. <laughs> because, And the reason why is I just usually look at support and resistance. But obviously, um, it, the 38.2% lines up. This other line here is the 33%. And the only reason why the 33% is on there is because I use it for um, looking at kangaroo tails. Uh, which, in fact, we could do with this one. Let's do that. Uh, this kangaroo tail... If we zoom in, we will see that this kangaroo tail, the open and the close of this kangaroo tail are, let me zoom in, actually let's look at the four hour, and we'll see, well we can go to the daily, that's fine. The open and the close are actually uh, like below the 23.6%, so it's probably down in like the 15th percentile of the candle, which is a really good sign, right? The only thing that would be better than that is if the candle was red. Everything about this candle looks great. Everything about this setup looks great. And I agree with Jeff. Jeff's looking at taking this. He says, if printed on the daily chart on the pound Aussie, the tip of the tail printed at a key resistance area with lots of horizontal support resistance, lines up with the 38.2. I would say brilliant, Jeff. Go for it. I think that's an excellent looking setup. Um, the only thing, and this is the only thing, that would really stink is if next week the market gaps down here and opens up down here because that means it will probably start moving upward throughout the day. So that would be the only thing to me that would be bad is if the market opened well below the closing price of 51.93. So for example, if it opened down at 51.60 or something like that, to me that would be um, a bad sign. The other thing, of course, is if during the Asian session, the market actually gets up to, say, this area up here, you know, to like 52.57 around there. During the Asian session, that would also be a bad sign because... Um, you know, it's just gone too far, that sort of thing. If it goes like 80% of the way to the tail, I usually say, okay, this trade's no good. Particularly if it goes 80% of the way to the tail before it trades lower than the kangaroo tail see, down here. So if instead during the Asian session, say it opens up around here, around where it closed, and it starts going up and up and up during the Asian session, that'd be really bad. Now, if it goes slightly up during the Asian session, that would be ideal. So I would say, well spotted, Jeff. That looks like a brilliant setup. Now, we have another question here on the forum about, um, it was, I think it was Lisa's, and I think Lisa was looking at, I think Lisa was looking at the Aussie. 
Yeah, so Lisa has a really interesting chart here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is uh, a kangaroo tail looking candle on the Aussie um, weekly. And so let me bring this one up. It's, it's an interesting idea. Um, let, a little bit of background on the kangaroo tails. You can, if you want, create a, a simple program, and they're out there, in fact, where you know the, the, you'll know you get um, an alert, and it'll print an arrow or a happy face or something above kangaroo tails, so you see them on the chart. The problem with that is that unless they're on a really nice level of support and resistance, like this one is up here, what will end up happening is they don't do very well. Um, and the win rate goes way down if you just take every single kangaroo tail. So let's talk about this setup right here. Now I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that the market's not going to go down. All I'm saying is I'm just looking at because obviously it looks pretty bearish. But what I'm saying is that this candle itself is not sort of the ideal type kangaroo tail that I'm looking for. And the reason why is because it doesn't have all of the characteristics that I look for in a kangaroo tail. The first characteristic that I look for is that the open and the close are inside of the previous candle's range. You can see here that actually the close is a little bit outside of the previous candle's range because the close is at 104 and the low of the previous candle is at 104.10. So it's actually 10 pips lower. So that's the first, that's the first thing that it doesn't fit. Um, sometimes I'm willing to overlook it. Like for example, look at this one right here. You can see this candle right here. Um, it printed a kangaroo tail, and you know it was a weekly one, obviously. And the close was a little bit outside because the the previous candle had a low of 103.74, and this candle closed at 103.51. Sorry, the previous candle had a low of of 103.74. Yeah, and then 103.51. So it closed like 20 pips lower, right? But yet, because it had such a long tail, that looks pretty good to me, and I was willing to take that trade. Uh, another example of that was back here a couple years ago. Oh, that was the one, actually. Let me just see. Yeah, that was the one. Um, this one doesn't really qualify as a kangaroo tail because it doesn't have the second characteristic of a kangaroo tail, which is that the open and the close must be in the top third of the candle. In other words... For a bullish one, it's in the top third. For a bearish one, in the in the bottom third. This right here, and that's why my fib grid. I was joking about that earlier. Why my fib grid has the 33%. The reason why I have a 33% level here, which is this. Here's 100 or the 0%, 23.6, and then this third line is 33.3. So both the open and the close should be above this third line, and in fact, the open is below it. So that tells me that the market did not print a true kangaroo tail there. The last thing I look for, actually there's two more things, uh, is that the, the market prints a kangaroo tail on a support and resistance level, right? And um, that it will have some room to the left, which is a bit of a sort of a nebulous concept. But let me show you what I'm talking about. The best kangaroo tails have room to the left, like this one does right here. What is this concept of room to the left? This is a kangaroo tail here that has room to the left, but unfortunately the op the close of the candle is not inside the previous candle's range, so it doesn't fit. The closing is in fact too much too it's much higher. See it went up at 9307 and the previous candle has a high of 9250. So it went 57 pips higher, right? Um, so let's let's look at this idea of, of, of room to the left or space. Um, uh, let's see here. Here is a good example of this where I can actually look at this kangaroo tail. It fits all the criteria. The open and the close are in the top third of the candle. The open and the close are inside the previous candle's range. It's not a support and resistance level. The reason I say that is because I can see that the market actually fell from this touch right here. And then it held here and then it held there. So it's a really nice level. And then. Um, the room part comes in when you see this. Look how much of this candle has printed on its own on the chart. In other words, the long tail of the candle is, is occupied some unique space on the chart where we don't see any other candles touch that level unless we go back how many weeks? 
we go back, uh, it looks like 16, 17 weeks before we see the markets printed on that level. And those, the longer you have to go back to see any price action in the tail of the kangaroo tail, the better off you are. And that's why I don't like taking kangaroo tails like, say, this one, because the kangaroo tail printed in an area where there's all this other price action to the left. And that kind of, and here's another one right here. This kangaroo tail printed, but look, there's no space. There's no room. It's right in the middle of all this recent price action. The very best kangaroo tails look something like the famous one here. Oh, it's a couple years away. The famous one right here. Oh, no, that's not the one. It's 2008. This one right here. This weekly kangaroo tail is the famous one. Now, it went a lot further than I expected, but look at how much room it has. It's off the chart. Most of the kangaroo tail printed, the tail printed on an area in the chart, we don't see any recent price action. So why do I look for that? Why would I look for a kangaroo tail to have room to the left? The, the answer is, I don't know where the market's going to reverse. I don't know where that's going to happen. But what I do know is, it looks like those places on the chart. In other words, those places on the chart where the market reverses and doesn't come back to for years and years and years, those are places where you have a lot of room to the left. The market will usually make an extreme high or an extreme low and, and just probe that area and then reverse and won't come back for, for a long time. And that's why I like to see kangaroo tails with that. So hopefully that answers that question. Technically, the, the, the candle itself looks pretty good. It's just, it's just not placed in the right spot. I'd prefer to see it up here at 107.70. Uh, that would have been great if it was at 107.70 and it had some room to the left. That would be really, really nice. But when they print sort of in-between zones um, and, and they don't have a lot of room to the left, like this one right here is another example. It's a classic example here of that sort of thing where you have this candle right here and it just sort of, it's just sitting there. You know, it's not really... It's not really doing much, and then, and then, of course, the market fell, and that would have been a bullish setup too. Uh, the last thing about kangaroo tails, of course, is that the next candle after the kangaroo tail should trigger the trade. That's really the ideal setup. And if you look here at our recent one on the from yesterday, actually, on the old um, kiwi, you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the kangaroo tail on the kiwi, and you can see that it's got room to the left. Uh, the market did print where the tail of the kangaroo tail is, but it was a few days ago where it did that. Uh, it would have been nice to see it longer, but it looks like about nine trading days ago is the last time the market printed in this area. Um, the next candle did in fact trade lower, uh, and the open the closer in the bottom third of the candle, it's on a nice support and resistance level. It's got plenty of space, and the open and close in the bottom third, it's got everything. And then, of course, the next candle actually trades lower, which is ideal. So that's really the type of setup I'm looking for. You have the, um, the other one here uh, with the Singapore dollar, same sort of deal here. Uh, it's got a little bit of room to the left, which is nice. Could be, not, could be better, right? But the next candle trades higher. The open and the close are inside the previous candle's range. The open and the close are well inside the top third of the candle. Really, really nice in, in terms of that aspect. And the next candle has actually triggered the trade and has gone up. So um, those are two really nice looking setups. So I appreciate the charts and I'm glad that um, you guys are checking out some of these setups and I'm happy to go over any of them. So until the next video, I wish you very happy trading. We'll see you soon. Bye.